welcome back to Gnostic Network in the series Insights of a Modern Mystic with Isabella Green. I am your host, Tara Crete. This is the sixth episode in our series, and we are going to be discussing quantum travel, the void. We will discuss the difference between astral travel, which we spoke about in episode five, and quantum travel, what can be experienced in quantum travel, and what is the void. Hello again, Isabella. How are you? Hi, Tara. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. So tell us, we spoke in depth in episode five about astral travel, and that was kind of like kind of like the beginner's level for people who are just starting to leave their bodies. So what is the main difference between astral travel and quantum travel? The main difference is that you literally bypass the astral plane and low astral plane and the planes that are around Earth that we venture around when we're doing astral travel or astral projecting. You gather enough of your life force or the rocket fuel from the lower energy centers to send yourself out of body and you shoot like a rocket and you're instantly in the place or in the location where you want to go. This is the difference. So the astral versus quantum is instant. Because in the quantum world, there is no time and space. There is no distance between where we are now to where we're going. That's the, that's the interesting thing about quantum mechanics is it's so hard to grasp with the human mind, but that's also what makes it so fascinating to me. So is it the same? Last in episode five, you spoke to us about relaxing into it, practicing, getting into like a deep meditation. Is, the, is it the same pro process to quantum it's travel? I would not say that it is the same process because in my experience, what happened was that it started happening with me as I started doing uh, the intense breath work and my entire physical form will shut down. The Kundalini energy will ignite my spirit form and shoot me right into the destination that I had in mind. You have to set the destination in mind before you go, and then everything shakes, your body shakes. It's a very intense process. It's a very different process than um, astral projecting. Astral projecting is slow and floating out here. It's intense, like you are launching a space shuttle <laughs> out of yourself and it sends your spirit right into the destination that you have in mind. So it literally is instant. And when you're in that destination, if you decide that you have had enough of that destination and you want to go elsewhere, you literally have to just think next and you will instantly be in a different location. That's how it works. So when you're starting to do this, how, what, what would be a destination? Where would we want to go on a quantum travel? There is no limit to where you can go. I've been to gazillion planets. I've been throughout space. I've been to spacecrafts and shuttles and uh, meetings with councils of uh, multidimensional, interdimensional, and non-terrestrial beings. I've been to, pff, you name it, I've been to the place where I believe, or at least on one of the timelines where my soul decided to come into Earth. I call it the red planet. I've, I, once I discovered how to do this, I did not stop exploring it. I'm still exploring it. It's been 10 years, almost nine years of, of going um, you know, on quantum travel, uh, quantum trips almost every night. Sometimes it doesn't work. If you are frustrated and stressed out, if you had a hard day, if you, would, you are not in the right set mindset before, then you're going to be just processing your day and it gets so intense there that it doesn't allow you. But if you had a more relaxing day, something that allows you to disconnect from your earthly stuff, then yeah, that happens every time. So sky is the limit. Sky is not even the limit. You can, <laughs> I've, been, I've been to 
uh, Andromeda Galaxy. There's a beautiful place there that I like to go. I've been to Arcturus and the Syrian constellation and the Pleiades. And uh, I've interacted with many different types of beings that live in these dimensions or in these locations. I've uh, got very connected. Well, you can connect with some of these beings and visit them and you can meet them in like obscure space, just in space. But when you first went in that form, because they'll be in the same form, they'll be in the um, light form as well. Most of them are in the light form to begin with, but they will come to meet you so where and it will just be the space kind of without any particular location but i've explored different types of habitats of different types of beings and it's fascinating and there's no end to it so that is the best sci-fi i've experienced in my entire life there's no movie uh, on this planet that can compare to what you can experience and that's real out there <laughs> versus someone's imagination. Although imagination is also um, a projection of something that already exists. So I'm going to shoot for something higher than the bar scene in uh, Star Wars then. <laughs> I won't stop there. I won't have that be my <laughs> limit. Did you ever encounter, because we talked about this in the last episode as well, how, you know, when you are out in these dimensions and in these other areas that you could encounter some danger. Did you ever encounter anything like that 